It was 1996. It was my second last year in elementary school. I hadn't yet reached high school, and yet I was already thinking about my, my first vehicle. I always wanted my dad's Mustang, but I wanted a vehicle of my own. And at that time, the aftermarket scene was starting to move. 1996 Dodge Stealth all-wheel drive twin turbo was a vehicle of choice, along with the Dodge Viper. But for myself, alternative fuel vehicles never even crossed my mind. Because it was 1996, nobody cared about saving the environment. There were people, but it wasn't as big as it is today. One company had a vision. A vision to lease out and try an electric vehicle for the 20th century. And before the end of the decade, General Motors would be the first major automaker in the past few decades to finally make a brand new electric car. But where were they going with this project and why did it end? General Motors gave the world something to think about, but unfortunately cut its life too short. And today they are playing catch up. AutoWorks.net Autopod, streaming day or night, coming right at you, right here, right now. Welcome back to the AutoLooks Podcast. I am your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J. himself, coming to you from podbeam.com and our own website, www.autolux.net. Today, we're talking about General Motors and their catch-up in the electric vehicle category. Yes, 1996 was the year General Motors created the EV1 project, and they put them out into the marketplace, with some high-profile people actually owning them. They loved them. A full electric vehicle. Sure, it only went a maximum just over 60 miles on a charge, and a charge took overnight to refuel your vehicle, but it was a start. Now, electric cars on this magnitude hadn't been seen on the marketplace since the early 1900s. Actually, 1915 was one of the last major years of electric automobile. Back then, companies made them for wives and the help. Men would go out and get into their you know, Model T, fire it up, and drive to work. Or if it broke down, they could fix it. And winding it up, they'd get dirty. Well, for their partners and for the help, they would get them electric vehicles so they wouldn't get dirty. And the battery power at that time, all you had to do is charge it and you can away you go. There's a lot less maintenance on it. And then the oil companies got involved. Things became cleaner. Push button starts. They got, you know, automatic transmissions. Everything started moving and progressing to a technological dream where it didn't matter your class or who you were. You could drive that vehicle and not have to worry about getting dirty. And at that time, petroleum was everywhere. Anybody can get it for their vehicle. And the electric industry took a major hit, being mostly shuttered by big oil companies and the companies that made them not having enough sales. But in 1996, GM tried to revamp visit the electric car arena and knowing that there was such a movement in the early to mid 90s about people trying to save the earth hell global warming was just starting to come out in 1996 the internet was just coming out so why did general motors make an electric vehicle it was a pilot project they wanted to prove to the world that electric vehicles weren't as good as the internal combustion engines and that the technology was dated well, the ev1 project was scrapped just as quickly as it came it quickly went with general motors is taking all of the vehicles back with a few minor exceptions still existing out there with their power sources removed. General Motors didn't want anyone to have a fully sustainable General Motors EV1 left in the world. They took them all and they crushed them. But right around that time, the internet was taking off and a guy known by Elon Musk created a program called PayPal, allowing us to pay online without having to use credit cards. Creating a system so easily and so readily available for the mass quantities of people starting to utilize the internet, his program blew up. But his mindset about this EV1 was set. He thought it was an amazing thing. Now himself, he didn't start the Tesla project, but he did eventually take it over and it became part of what he was working on after he sold PayPal unit off. With his millions behind him, he financed the work for Tesla Motors. He worked in collaboration with Lotus Cars for his body. It was a original two backers he built the tesla roadster unlike the general motors ev1 went more than a hundred miles on a charge taking between six to eight hours to recharge it still took forever but when it's a sports car you're not going to take it on really long trips and you're not going to need to use it every single day so he entered into the niche of sports cars and with that he took the financing that he received from selling his original roadsters off to finance and build the first sustainable electric mobility unit 
it since the early 1900s, the Model S. And when the Model S arrived, people thought it was groundbreaking. It shook the ICE world up. Now, why would we bring this up in a podcast about General Motors and its electric future? Because General Motors started working on the project of the Chevrolet Volt. With financial backing from both the Canadian and American governments, General Motors put into motion the Volt development program. Yes, after the Model S came out, General Motors knew that electric power was coming. And since Tesla wasn't standing down and he put transponders in his vehicles to make sure that the media and corporations around the world could not bring down his company, the same that had happened to many, many other electric cars over the past 40 years before that. He wanted to make sure that this industry would strive and take over as the main power source for vehicles. General Motors saw the writing and by 2011, the Chevrolet Volt entered the world. Yes, the world had gone through the financial crisis, which brought down the Volt development program. So why did they keep producing it if they knew that there were problems with its development? Well, General Motors knew that this new power source would be powering cars of the future. And this is 2011. This is 10 years ago. The Volt came out. Now, people didn't line up to get the Volt like they did for the Model S. And even its counterpart, the Chevrolet Bolt, they didn't line up for. The one thing that Chevrolet didn't understand is that people don't line up for a standard brand product. Yes, Toyota had been become a successful with the Prius brand of hybrids, but they were just in that. They were hybrids. The Volt and Bolt were moving into full electrics. Now, the Volt was a hybridized version too. But unfortunately, Toyota had already taken that marketplace. And General Motors was using their Chevrolet brand to try and market EVs. Well, the unfortunate thing is people don't want to pay $40,000 for a compact sedan from Chevrolet. Toyota is understandable because of the quality behind them. People are willing to pay a little bit extra to save the environment and get the quality. That and the fact the mindset of the average Toyota buyer is completely different than General Motors. General Motors did not realize this. The Volt slowly died out, never amassing the sales records that the Model S had occurred. But with the Volt, they knew they needed to make money. They decided to go after the coupe marketplace. Hell, Tesla made it big with the Roadster. Detroit Electric was coming back with their own Lotus Roadster. Why not give Cadillac a chance? And the ELR was born. 2014, the Cadillac ELR burst onto the scene as this amazing electric Cadillac of the future. <sighs> It was just as good as the Chevrolet Volt at a price point a bit higher. Most people who owned them weren't too crazy about them. They were willing to pay $100,000 for a Tesla from a tiny little company they didn't even have a factory back warranty on compared to Cadillac. Because as everybody knows, General Motors jams all the new technology under the hood of Cadillac products. That's why they tend to have a little bit more issues than some of the other premium and luxury brands out there. It's all new technology and the ELR was the same. And when people found out it's the exact same thing as the Volt, they quit buying them. And within two short years, the ELR was gone, completely gone, they pulled from the marketplace. The Volt pressed on just until the Bolt appeared. Now, the Bolt appeared at the same time BMW released their i3, but the i3 made sales. The Bolt didn't. But yet again, we get that luxury fact to it. What did General Motors do wrong here? They sold the electric car under a standard brand, failing to sell the Bolt. They moved their premise over to Buick. Now, Buick in China only has created the Valise 6 and Seven. They have a Buick Encore electric model along with Buick Elite 6, which is a station wake, trying to go after more interior space than Toyota Prius. Buick, being as big as it is in China, was able to capitalize on China's need for green vehicles. And the Elite is now a sales success. One of the only for General Motors. And also because it's tied to a premium brand, its price point is that. It's in line with the premium brand. It's only slightly higher than the internal combustion engine counterparts. The technology has moved ahead so far that General Motors can now reduce its price. But this was too late to save the Volt, the ELR, and even the Opel Impera. Moving into the future, General Motors is now looking to bring back a nameplate. Yes, we're talking about Hummer, a brand name so synonymous with horrible gas mileage and large road presence. General Motors is creating a brand new GMC Hummer EV pickup truck and SUV 
for the General Motors Corporation brand. It's not a true new Hummer brand. It is a sub-brand of General Motors. GM is now learning what everybody else has done. BMW has the I. Volkswagen has the ID. Seat has gone with Supra. Volvo has gone with Polestar. All these companies are sub-branding out their electric vehicles. In case it doesn't work out, they can pull the plug without harming the main product range. We already covered this in our Polestar podcast from a couple weeks ago. General Motors is taking a step from those companies and creating a new electric sub-brand. And with the Hummer brand having such a wide variety of price points, they could sell this product at a higher price point and capitalize on the expanding electric vehicle truck market. Market that Rivian and Tesla are now created. But it doesn't stop there. General Motors is trying to move back into the electric Cadillac ring with the new Cadillac Lyric concept, a new crossover utility vehicle. Consider the fact the only product available in the CUV full electric models is the Tesla Model X, which is more of an alternative lifestyle vehicle as opposed to a CUV. Cadillac is going to capitalize on the rise of the CUV marketplace and build a new electric model within the mid-sized marketplace. They're going after the bread and butter segment of the world. Smart, but General Motors could be a little bit smarter. With the release of the Hummer brand going full electric, if Chevrolet wanted to go electric, electric. Now listen up, General Motors. We're going to give you some hints and tips of what your corporation should do. Mary Barrara, play close attention. General Motors owns a whole bunch of defunct car brands. Now this is something that FCA should also take in consideration when they want to do this with either the Dodge or Chrysler brand. If General Motors wants to move Chevrolet into a price point hybrid or electric to compete with Prius, Honda Insight, Toyota Mirai, they have to bring back an old brand. Sub brand. They attached Hummer to General Motors because Hummer was considered a truck and SUV brand. Tie it in with General Motors and GMC is a truck and SUV brand. You can create an electric sized version of it. And it's been a decade since they disappeared. So an entire generation has completely lost the fact that Hummer was a gas guzzling pig for the roads. Now why do I say that they needed to listen to what we have to say? Fiat Chrysler hasn't listened to anything we said about trying to save some of their brands. So why would General Motors listen to Autolux? The doctor to the automotive industry about his information and insights into helping them achieve market status in the electric vehicle ring. If you would like to move Chevrolet into the EV category, you have two ways of doing it. Best option is for Chevrolet to create a sub-brand like General Motors with Hummer. You can create the Chevrolet Saturn EVs since the Saturn nameplate was so synonymous with product quality and technology of the future. Consider the fact it had plastic body panels built in cars in the 90s, which means they didn't rot. Amazing! Something you can add to a brand new electric vehicle. Next to that, you have the Pontiac brand and Oldsmobile. Now, Detroit Electric had a failed restart on trying to bring back their vehicles, even under the Lotus cars, because the logo is old, the name is old, and they really didn't have the backing of someone like Elon Musk. But Buick is doing well in the EV market. If they really wanted to, you can create a performance-oriented brand within the General Motors stable to go up against Dodge and create an electric firm versions of it. Pontiac and Oldsmobile. Utilizing one of these three brands for the Chevrolet brand would help. Hell, even using the Oldsmobile brand name for Buick stable vehicles, considering the fact that when Oldsmobile dissipated, the product's line was the exact same as Buick. They were a premium brand. They were going after more of a sport appeal compared to Buick, but they were still essentially premium brands. Where Pontiac was similar to Chevrolet, just Pontiac was more sport oriented, similar to that of Dodge. As as opposed to Chevrolet, which is more similar to Toyota and Honda. But like we said, General Motors wants to take note from Autolux and the doctor to the automotive industry, bring back Saturn. Use, utilize Saturn as your electric vehicle for the General Motors Chevrolet division stable. Two sub-brands being rekindled for technology of the future. And while doing this, you can bring back some of the old favorites. Utilizing the Pontiac nameplate, you can create a sports car, an electric sports car under the Fiero nameplate. Utilizing Saturn, you had the Solstice, you had the Sky, you had the View, Oldsmobile, Aurora, 66, Alero. All these old product nameplates can be reused for new electric vehicles for a generation that doesn't even know these cars even existed. Since the Miata is not moving into the electric field, why not rekindle Saturn as your sub brand to Chevrolet in the electric field and bring in the new electric 
Eric Sky. Now, we do know that these segments are huge, so the profit margins wouldn't be that great. But capitalizing on an old brand that was the wave of the future, especially when it was launched in the 80s, Saturn could be the savior of Chevrolet. Buick's got it. Electric vehicles. Cadillac's moving into electric vehicles. General Motors Corporation is utilizing Hummer. Give Saturn to Chevrolet. Maybe, just maybe, if it had been the Saturn Volt and the Saturn Bolt, it would have made more sense. They might have been able to capitalize on its premium price tag to take down that of Toyota and Tesla. General Motors does have a great looking electric future ahead of it. But without creating their own sub brands to keep their standalone brands alive, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of years to bring those companies into the world of the future. So all in all, capitalizing General Motors on its previous product stable, they can make a go of it in the EV marketplace. But unfortunately, their time may be passed. And if the Hummer EV and the Cadillac Lyric don't make it, General Motors may be all out of options. And considering this, they canceled their deal with the Nikola Badger to save the Hummer EV product from having a major counterpart competing against it, may be fully out of options if these products fail. So from all of us at Autolux, General Motors, take note and utilize some of your old products and some of your old companies to build your electric future, to build a fuel cell product for the future. A performance oriented fuel cell product from a Pontiac label is way better than a Chevrolet one. So if you like this podcast, please share, comment, or like it with your friends, family, and fans of the automobile industry and its wave of the future. And if they're looking for other places to find this podcast, please check out our iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon Music, Stitcher, and many, many, many others. They're all attached to the Autolux podcast. And if you're looking for up-to-date reviews about all of these products, check out autolux.net on a reviews page. See how well they rate it and see how well they did in the marketplace. Maybe you can find some holes in their design aspects that could have saved these companies and products from demise at autolux.net. So strap yourself in for one fun wild ride from the Autolux podcast and General Motors electric future.